shalom and welcome everyone to another episode of keys of the kingdom i am your host tony pino and in today's episode we are going to get back to my roman series we are in romans chapter 10 uh, we ended right around verse 5 uh, also don't forget that you can hit that subscribe button on the right hand side to subscribe to my youtube channel i'll also leave a link in the description box because i'm also on spotify and you can hit the like button hit the comment button please pass this video around if you feel it will help others uh, as we are tackling the book of romans today we are in chapter 10 like i said and we ended right around verse 5 we are talking about the righteousness of god which is yeshua and his righteousness is what saves us he is the righteousness of god what does that mean that means that Yeshua was acting in accordance to covenant faithfulness to the covenant of Abraham. Amen. That covenant faithfulness is so important because that is only done by Yahweh. Yahweh must stay faithful to his covenant to Abraham. He is the one that acts on it. He is the one that does it. And now we're seeing through progressive revelation, what does all that mean? That means that we are being delivered from the power of sin, the power of the slavery of sin. We are all slaves to sin. We've been defiled by sin. And so through the work of Yeshua, which is the righteousness of God, we are being delivered. And this is all foreshadowed in the work that Yeshua did when he delivered Israel out of Egypt. He not only delivered the ethnic Israelites, but he also delivered the Gentiles. It is salvation by faith through grace. So the work of Yahweh is the only way you can be set free. And then you put your faith and trust in what? Walking in covenant faithfulness. So you put your faith and trust in Yahweh for his deliverance. And then you put your faith and trust in your covenant that you've just made with him. And that means you must walk in covenant faithfulness. So Yes, we saw in Romans there that the uh, Jewish people of the first century were trying to uh, be saved by their own righteousness. And what did that mean? That didn't mean that they were trying to earn their salvation by the keeping of the law. That's not what any Jew believed back then. They believed they were saved because they were sons of Abraham. They were ethnic seeds of Abraham. And you can just go to Matthew chapter 3, I believe it's verse 9, and you can see Yochanan the Immerser telling them, hey, there's a wrath that is coming, and don't think that you, being a son of Abraham, are going to be, what, excused from this. You know, I'm paraphrasing here, but they had trust in their ethnicity that they would be spared from the wrath that is to come. No, they weren't walking in covenant faithfulness. The Sinai covenant is a conditional covenant, and so they were not doing their part of walking in faithfulness. So they were going to receive the wrath that is to come. Has nothing to do with ethnicity. But in the first century, yes, that's what was the central focus. Hey, we are Jews. We are uh, promised the world to come. We will, you know, we're not going to receive the wrath that those Gentiles are going to receive. No, it is not about your ethnicity. This is what Paul is uh, combating and trying to make Gentiles become Jews through their traditions that was another thing that Paul is battling because it's not about your ethnic identity. So this is what we're dealing with here in Romans and especially when we're getting into chapter 10 here because the idea of replacement theology is kind of simmering. It's kind of being birthed, I think, at this time. One of the big reasons why the book of Romans is being written because there is this idea of, well, maybe the Jews have been cast aside and replaced, you know? So now we're getting into the deepness of Paul's letter, the actual goal of Paul's letter. Yes, the righteousness of God is Yeshua. Yes, you can't depend on your own righteousness, speaking to the ethnic Israelites. Hey, just because you're an Israelite, that doesn't mean you're automatically saved. You are saved through faith, whether you are a Jew or whether you are a Gentile. And we're going to get into that today. So let's go ahead and get into Romans chapter 10. All right. So again, as we can see here in verse four, for Christ is the end of law. Remember, the definite article is not there. So it's just law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Yeshua is the goal, right? Everything that God, Yahweh, was performing through the covenant of Abraham and through the Sinai covenant, okay, is the fulfillment is found in Messiah Yeshua. And that has to do with you being delivered, being uh, set free from the power of the kingdom of darkness. You have been redeemed. You have been ransomed 
out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Amen. And you have been purified by the blood of Yeshua. Okay. This is not something you can do of yourself. Only Yeshua, the righteousness of God can do this to you. And then you are called to walk in covenant faithfulness. So he is the goal. He is the telos of law for righteousness. This does not mean that the law of Moshe is abolished. Okay. This does not mean that the covenant of Abraham is abolished, but this does mean that it is being fulfilled through the work of Yeshua. And that work has not been fully fulfilled yet, right? There still is the second coming. There still is so much more that is promised to the uh, kingdom of Israel, to the uh, nation of Israel that has not been fulfilled. So there's so much more to come. Now, in verse five, we see here that uh, for Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law. Now, the definite article here is there. So we are talking about the law of Moshe. Is there a righteousness based on the law? Absolutely, there is. Because we can even go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24 through 25. It is righteousness for you who do this law. There is a righteousness, walking in rightness, walking in holiness, but you've already been redeemed. You've already been ransomed, right? Because of the righteous act of Yeshua. Yeshua was the Malak, the messenger of Yahweh. He delivered Israel out of Egypt with the mixed multitude, right? Salvation by grace. And then, of course, in the new covenant, it's salvation by grace in the same way. Faith and trust in Yeshua. He is the righteousness of God. Amen. He delivers you out of the kingdom of darkness and puts you into the kingdom of light. You are filled with the spirit. You have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. All right. That is the sign of the new covenant there, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And then you are now what? Still called to walk in righteousness. Amen. And what laws are you called to follow? Well, it's the laws of Moshe. That does not change. Those are the laws of righteousness that you walk in after you receive the righteousness of God. So for Moshe writes about the righteousness that is based on the law that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. Okay, that's not what they were doing in the first century. Now, this is Leviticus chapter 18, 5. The person that does the commandments shall live by them. You are commanded to live by the law of Moshe. Amen. They are righteousness for you, right? They are your righteousness. When you walk in them, they teach you how to walk in the character of Yahweh. This is how you walk in the image of Yahweh. You have been made in his image, which means that's a job duty. You've been called to walk in his image, to reflect the image of Yahweh to all, right? How do you do that? Through the commandments and the power of the Holy Spirit. Now that you're in the new covenant, the power of the Holy Spirit is leading you and guiding you into what? Walking in the commandments so that you learn how to love Yahweh with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's what the law of Moshe teaches. All right. Then, then verse six, we have, but the righteousness based on faith says, now the word in Greek here, day, okay, can mean but, but it also can mean and or now or however, okay, depending on the context here. And so, uh, we can put, and the righteousness based on faith says, now is someone who walks according to the law of Moshe not walking in faith? Oh, no, they're walking in faith. Absolutely. That's the only way you can do the law of Moshe correctly. But the righteousness that is based on faith, meaning trust in Yeshua, we're talking about the righteousness of God. That's what we're looking at here. The righteousness of God, you're delivering uh, out of the bondage of sin, that is based on faith, faith and trust in Yeshua. So the righteousness based on faith does not say in his heart, who will ascend into heaven or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, it is in your mouth and it is in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Okay, We proclaim that Yeshua is what? Lord right? Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, what Paul is doing here is he's taking parts of Deuteronomy chapter 30. If you start with verse 11 and read down through, I believe, around verse 14, you can see that after Moshe gave the commandments to Israel, he told them that they are not too hard for you, 
okay? And you're not to look up into heaven to say who will bring that word down for you, right? Nor are you to look over the sea to see who will go across the sea and bring that word to you. But the word is in you, it is in your heart, and you can do it, all right? This is all acting on faith. Everything is built on faith. Walking in the covenant is built on faith. Being delivered from the bondage of sin is on faith. But your faith in being delivered from the bondage of sin and being purified from your unrighteousness, your faith is in Yeshua. Okay, Yeshua is the one that did the work that will cleanse you from all unrighteousness and deliver you from sin. And then that faith that you have in Yeshua, you have just made him Lord. You have made him king. This same faith is how you walk in what? The commandments. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So keeping the law is done by faith. Okay? But keeping the law is an expression that you've already been delivered. It's, it, it's what comes after your deliverance. So it's not what delivers you but it is what, how you fulfill covenant faithfulness to the one who delivered you out of the kingdom of darkness. So yes, it is the righteousness of Yeshua that delivered you from the kingdom. You've gone from death to life, right? And on the part, time of the resurrection, you will have become born again, amen? And the deposit of that is the Holy Spirit living inside of you, Amen, that you have the spirit of Messiah Yeshua, which is the spirit of God, right? He is deity. And so, yes, you begin to walk out this covenant faithfulness. But everything surrounds your faith and trust in Yeshua. Outside of that, there is no salvation. He is the one that did the work to deliver you. So the righteousness based on faith, this is talking about your trust in Yeshua because he is the righteousness of God. And it's not that following the law is now gone and done away with, or you don't do it. No, that same faith that you have in Yeshua that delivered you out of the kingdom of darkness is the same faith you're going to do when you're following the law, because that is your responsibility. Yeshua did his part. Now you have to do your part, and that is to walk in covenant faithfulness. This is why Yochanan the Immerser told the Israelites, hey, don't think you're going to be spared. The wrath is to come. Were they walking in covenant faithfulness? No, they weren't. Were they freely delivered by God? Yeah, they were what? Part of the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel was under a covenant relationship with Yahweh. Amen. And it always had Gentiles throughout its history, part of the nation of Israel. There's always been Gentiles permanently living amongst the Israelites, wanting to serve Yahweh. So they've always been freely uh, able to follow Yahweh, they had to follow the same laws, amen, as the native. And that's the same way it is in the new covenant. But there is a responsibility. The Israelites, when Yochanan the Immerser was talking to them, they were not following the law of Moshe. What were they dependent upon? Oh, we're sons of Abraham. Because of our ethnicity, there's no way we can lose our salvation. There's no way we can lose our covenant with Yahweh. Oh, yes, yes, you can as an individual, you can. He's not going to abandon Israel. There's always a faithful remnant. So he's not going to abandon the nation of Israel. And this is what we're getting to in Romans chapter 10, eventually when we get to verse 11. Okay. Yes. Salvation is not dependent upon ethnicity. It is dependent upon you putting your faith and trust in Yeshua, whether you are what? A Jew or a Greek. So verse 10, with the heart one believes and is justified, made righteous, made right in the eyes of Yahweh. When Israel was delivered out of Egypt, right, they came out, came out by faith. They made it all the way to Sinai, and then they took on the covenant. So for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one is confess, confesses and is saved. What are you confessing? That Yeshua is curious. He is Lord, King. That means you are making a dedication to the kingdom, that you will serve only Yeshua, that you are taking on the responsibilities of the kingdom to live a kingdom life. Okay? If you don't make that confession, 
you are not saved. You can't just put your faith in Yeshua and think that doesn't include that now you will walk, that now you don't have to walk in righteousness, that you don't have to keep the commandments. No, you have to keep the commandments because that's the expression of your faith. That was your commitment to Yeshua. Can you lose your salvation? Absolutely, you can. Absolutely. Amen. You can walk away from Yeshua if you so choose to. But it is with your mouth that you confess. Amen. Because you're believing in his work. And how is that expressed? Through the keeping of the commandments again. So verse 11, for the scriptures say, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Okay, this word curios here has to do with Yahweh. Yeshua is Yahweh. You are calling on the name of Yeshua. This is a direct connection to uh, the Hebrew scriptures, which say, he who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That is speaking of Yahweh. Yeshua is Yahweh. Amen. He came down, took on human flesh. He is your deliverer. He is your savior. And it has never mattered whether Jew or Greek. Anyone can put their faith and trust in Yahweh and they shall be saved. That's why when they left Egypt, the Gentile was welcome to come by grace because it is about faith. It has always been that way. All right. All throughout the Bible, that does not change. It never has. It's always been about faith. Amen. And faith is what? Being used as a verb, as an action. So faith and trust in Yeshua will be expressed by you walking in covenant faithfulness, which includes repentance. All right. This doesn't mean you're going to walk sinlessly right now. Okay. You are going to sin. You are going to break the commandments. And you're going to what? Pick up your cross and follow Yeshua. You're going to walk in repentance. So does this do away with the law of Moshe? No. Does this do away with the covenant relationship that Yahweh has with Israel? No, it does not. But it does say that he is not a respecter of persons, that salvation comes both to the ethnic seed and the non-ethnic seed, right? The covenant of Abraham is very clear that the blessing will come to the ethnic seed and then out to the nations. And only those who put their faith and trust in Yahweh will be saved. But it is going to be what? The nation of Israel and the nations, those who put their faith and trust in Yahweh. But this is not a casting away of Israel. The promises made to Israel stand. And we'll get more into that as we continue in the book of Romans. But what a, what a, a set of passages that is just so full of meat. But you have to understand the first century. You have to understand that they believe salvation came by their ethnicity. So that's why they had the traditions. That's why they had the community laws and everything. You couldn't be part of their community unless you really became a Jew. You could not be a full-fledged member of the covenant unless you became a Jew, because that was their ideology in the first century, which is a false ideology. Okay, That was a man-made tradition, not found in the Torah. So. Hopefully you guys are grasping this and understanding this a little bit better. This is not the same doctrine as Western Christianity. Okay, Western Christianity believed that the Jews thought, oh, if I, I can earn my salvation by keeping the law. They did not believe that. Okay, They believed that they were in the covenant through their ethnicity. That's very, very important. That's why I keep driving home the point. Amen. So I hope you've enjoyed our time together. Again, hit that subscribe button, pass the video around if you feel it will help others. And yes, I hopefully will, uh, you'll be able to go to Spotify if that is easier for you. And I will put the link in the description box. Amen. So shalom, everyone. Until we meet again.